Peace, peace, this is your host, Eli Shalom, and this is the Cosmon Teachings in the Words of Jehovah and His Angel Ambassadors. Now, the topic of discussion today is called Decoding the Solar Calendar Using the Moon Cycles. Now, before I get started, let me start off by reading this verse from a waspy to drive my point home on this topic. In the Book of Inspiration, chapter 7, verse 33 through 35, and verse 38, it states, verse 33, As the spider learneth to build her net without a book, and the bees to dwell in the queendom, in peace and industry without books and written laws and instructions as how to do this and that. Even so, now is a new birth to the generations of my people. Verse 34. By my direct inspiration upon them shall they learn to do all things perfect in the order of man for which I created him. Verse 35. Man shall know how to do things easily and without the long labor of books without showing or explanations. Verse 38, to accomplish which thou shalt now, first of all, adapt thyself to thy creator, according to my highest light upon thee. Now these verses are gonna be backed by this whole video on those principles, adapting thyself to the creator and understanding how his creation works without books, which is the foundation of this video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you the difference between following a man-made calendar, regardless of what man-made calendar it is. If it's the Kemetic, the Enoch, the Hebrew, the Muslim, the Christian. What people don't understand when it comes to applying the sun cycles and the moon cycles is that you have to observe and keep track of the sun cycles in order to know how it works. There is no other way around this fact. Quoting biblical scriptures about the sun cycles and the moon cycles is not going to give you the insight of how the cycles work in real time. Now most people are under the Roman calendar. The Hebrews, the Kemetic, the Muslims, the Christians all base their holy days and sacred days around the Roman calendar. As much as they speak against it, they are subjected to it. Now they say that there is 364 days in the solar year. I'm going to prove this to be false as well. The question is, how did they come to the conclusion that the solar year is 364 days? This solar year is based off adding up the 12 Roman months which gives you a total of 364 days. Now, if I was to ask the question, prove to me that the solar calendar is 364 days without the Roman calendar, you will be lost. Even the Enoch calendar supports a 364 day solar cycle. But how can you prove it to be true instead of just quoting scripture? So first I wanna make it clear that if you take away the Roman calendar, which is a total of 364 days, when you add up the 12 Roman months, and you ask a Hebrew, a Kemetic, a Muslim, a Christian to prove that the sun cycle is 364 days, I can guarantee you they cannot give you an answer. Once the Roman calendar is swept from under their feet, they got nothing to stand on, on how to explain how the sun cycle works. The Hebrews will say, well, we don't follow the Roman calendar. But the Hebrew calendar, which the Hebrew calendar really is the lunar calendar, prior to the Roman calendar, but when we observe the Hebrew calendar today, its relevance is the same as the Roman calendar. They got the same total of days, months, as the Roman calendar. The only difference is the name of the months. There is no way to follow a man-made calendar and get to the truth of how this solar and lunar calendar really works. As I stated earlier, there is only one way to understand if this is even true or not, which is by observing the sun cycle. I can guarantee you not too many people counted the sun for 364 days out the year to prove if this is true or not. And then you would have to determine a starting point to start counting the sun cycles. And being that the sun does not go through phases, it is impossible to find the starting and ending point of the sun cycle using the sun. You will have to create a starting point and that will be man-made. But this is where the moon cycles come in at, but I'm going to explain that in a minute. I have been following, observing, keeping track of the sun cycles, the moon cycles for over seven years, for every night and day. And here are my works to prove I'm not just talking or saying I follow the sun and moon cycles. Here is my proof. This is 2006. 12 moon cycles. 2007. 12 moon cycles. This is 2008. Got all the 12s charted out on here. It's 
So I charted out 12 papers, 12 months. Twenty ten, twenty eleven, two that, twenty twelve. Everybody was talking about oh twenty twelve. Would you turn off the moon cycle in twenty twelve? No, your boy was though. Twenty twelve. There you go. Twelve months. 2013. There we go. See that. Keeping the track record. 2014. Last year. See that. So this is nine years worth of charting out the moon cycle. And I'm on my tenth year right now. Now I'm gonna show you how this works with no books, no Bible, not even a wasp just to show you that only direct observation will unlock the code and secrets of the Creator. First, let's examine the history of the Roman calendar, which most people follow and are subjected to. The first thing to know is that the Roman calendar came on the scene around the 8th century BC, and it only had 10 months to the year. So from March to December gave you a total of 304 days, which made the solar year for Rome at that time, being the 8th, 7th century BC. So if you were living in Rome at that time, your concept of a year was 304 days. Not based off following the sun cycle, but based off a man-made chart, a man-made calendar that the Romans created. Now the months of January and February were not even added yet, but it was King Numa Papillus that added January and February to the Roman calendar around 713 BC. So it was during the 8th, 7th century BC in Rome that the whole idea that the solar year is 364 days. And from that time until now, you have been believing that the solar year is 364 days. Now I want to be clear, if you ask an Israelite, a Kemetic, a Muslim, a Christian to prove that the solar year is 364 days without the Roman calendar, the Hebrew calendar, the Enoch calendar, or any man-made calendar, and tell them to prove it, I guarantee you they cannot prove the solar, the solar year is 364 days. You will quickly see how they will not have an answer to that or may just beat around the bush. But here I'm gonna prove how you can know the solar calendar without using any man-made calendar, regardless of its religious background. Now that we have cleared away the man-made calendar, I'm gonna be using the sun and the moon only to prove this point, which is the only tools needed to know how to decode the solar and lunar calendar. Now the first thing to understand is that in order to keep count of both the sun and the moon cycles is the moon itself. The moon goes through phases which gives a way to keep track of the nights and days. So now we got our measuring stick being the moon. The moon has a 29 to 30 day cycle. The moon gives off its light 28 nights and days and spend one to two days in total darkness giving a total of 29 or 30 nights and days. But in order to know if a moon cycle is 29 or 30 days, you have to observe it. There is no other way around this fact. For example, when it is the 28th night and day of the moon, being the last night and day, the moon gives off its light. The next day at evening, you will have to be standing where you can see the going down of the sun in the western horizon, in the western sky. And as the sun drops below the horizon, the crescent will be seen in the western sky. And if it is seen, that marks the beginning of the first night and day of a new moon cycle. And the last moon cycle previous would be a 29 night and day cycle. Now if the crescent moon does not appear, you will have to come out the next day at evening when the sun drops below the horizon, the crescent will be seen in the western sky. And again, this would signify the first night of a new moon cycle. And that would make the last previous moon cycle a 30 day cycle. See that? So this is just an example to show you that you must observe this in real time with your own eyes. And with that, you will slowly unlock the mysteries of the Creator's solar and lunar calendars. And as I follow the Creator's calendar, I can share some of the mysteries using no man-made calendar and using no books. Now the moon cycle have 12 cycles for one year. Now the sun has a cycle as well, which includes 
the summer and winter solstice and the spring and fall equinox. Now all these dates for the sun cycle is based off the Roman calendar. So for example, they will say the summer solstice is in June or July. But if we were not to use the Roman calendar and try to apply this, again, they will be lost on how to determine when these things occur. I want to keep making that clear. Without a man-made calendar, many are lost. Now, here is how you prove the solar calendar without a man-made calendar, without any books. Here is the secret. Now, there are 12 moon cycles to a year, and there are four seasons in a year. For the season of spring, there are three moon cycles. For the season of summer, there are three moon cycles. For the season of fall, there are three moon cycles. For the season of winter, there are three moon cycles. They're giving us a total of 12 moon cycles for the year. The moon cycles determine the beginning and ending of when the month begins and ends, and when a season begins and ends, and when a week begins and ends. So in order to unlock the sun cycles, you got to unlock the moon cycles first. There is no other way around this fact. Now the most important question is how do you determine when the solar year begins? Now, based off the Roman calendar, the solar year begins in January, that is New Year's. But if we take away the Roman calendar, how do we determine this? Now here's how you know when the sun cycle begins and ends. As I stated, the moon cycles unlock the sun cycles. How is that possible? The light that the moon gives off shows the direction of the sun's course. By understanding this, we can unlock how it works. On the first day of every moon cycle, the crescent moon gives the location of the sun's course based off the light the moon is rendering up. The first night and day of every moon cycle from the crescent moon will appear to be laying on its belly like a bull's horn, as seen here. And on the first night and day of every moon cycle, the crescent will begin gradually to rise as if to stand on its point, as seen here. And then it gradually lays back on its belly like a bullhorn. This process takes 12 moon cycles in a year. And it is the understanding of this that you will be able to determine the beginning and ending of the solar year. Because at the beginning of every solar year, the sign of it is expressed in the first night and day of a new moon cycle. And the proof is that the crescent moon will appear to be laying on its belly like this, looking like a bullhorn. This signifies the extreme peak of the sun's course in the southern travel. And then it will gradually rise and stand on its point. After this, the crescent, which looks like a bullhorn, will begin to gradually rise and stand on its point. The rising signifies the sun's course. To prove that this is true, just observe the first night and day of the crescent moon when it is laying on its belly. Six moon cycles after the crescent moon is laying on its belly, you will see it standing perfectly on its point, upright. Six moon cycles after, showing you where the course of the moon is at in its travel. And six moon cycles is half of the year. And the next six moon cycles the moon spends its time coming back to laying on its belly like a bullhorn. And it takes six moon cycles for that transition to happen. The same way it takes six moon cycles for it to go from laying on its belly to standing on its point. See that? This is how you determine the beginning and ending of the solar year using the light of the crescent moon. Now to apply the spring and fall equinox and the summer and winter solstice, the moon cycle is the code breaker once again. Now that we have determined the beginning of the solar year being the crescent moon laying on its belly like a bullhorn, we can decode the spring and fall equinox and the summer and winter solstice. And the way this is done is knowing that for each season there are three moon cycles and the peak of each season is the second moon cycle of each season. For example, for spring, there are three moon cycles, the first, second, and third moon cycles. And the second moon cycle will be the peak of spring, and in return, the peak of the spring equinox, when night and day are equal, 12 hours of night, 12 hours of day. For summer, there are three moon cycles, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. And the fifth moon cycle is the peak of summer, 
and the return is the peak of the summer solstice where there is 14 hours of sunlight and 10 hours of night. For the season of fall, there are three moon cycles, the seventh, eighth, and the ninth moon cycles. And the eighth moon cycle is the peak of fall, and in return, the peak of the fall equinox, where night and day are equal, where there are 12 hours of night and 12 hours of sunlight. For the season of winter, there are three moon cycles, the 10th, 11th, and the 12th moon cycle. And the 11th moon cycle is the peak of winter, and in return, the peak of the winter solstice, where there is 14 hours of night and 10 hours of sunlight. And as the moon goes throughout the 12 moon cycles and seasons, it spends its time progressing from laying on its belly like a bullhorn to standing upright on its point and then laying back on its belly, renders up the sun's course and in return the sun cycle and return the solar calendar. See that? And now to prove that the solar year is not 364 days, as I already proved that that concept came about by just adding up the 12 Roman months, giving you that 364 days. So if the solar calendar is not 364 days, then what it is? And how do you determine this? Now again, the moon cycle is the decoder. As I stated, the first day of the solar year is shown by the crescent moon laying on its belly like a bullhorn. And the next step is to add up the moon cycles from when it goes from laying on its belly like a bullhorn to standing upright on its point and then back to laying on its belly like a bullhorn. This process takes place 12 moon cycles for that to happen. So for example, I would use my own chart that I charted out of 2014 as an example. So when we add up the 12 moon cycles to render up the solar year, here's what we get. First, let me give you the number of days for the 12 moon cycles for 2014. Now, for spring, for spring, there was 30 days for the first moon cycle, 29 days for the second moon cycle, and 30 days for the third moon cycle. For summer, there were 30 days for the fourth moon cycle, 30 days for the fifth moon cycle, and 30 days for the sixth moon cycle. For fall, there were 29 days for the seventh moon cycle, 30 days for the eighth moon cycle, 29 days for the ninth moon cycle. For winter, there was 29 days for the 10th moon cycle, 30 days for the 11th moon cycle, and 29 days for the 12th moon cycle. Now, now these are the total number of days for 2014. And when we add this up, we get 355 nights and days. This is the number of nights and days total that renders up the solar calendar. Big difference from your 364 days, right? But I just proved to you how it works. And this is how you determine the solar calendar and the lunar calendar without using any man-made calendar, just by observation and keeping a track record of how the system works. Another secret that many people do not know about the solar and lunar cycle is that there is 354 nights and days in the solar and lunar year. But what you don't know is that the next solar and lunar year will not be 354 nights and days, but 355. For example, using my own records once again, I will start from 2010 to 2014 and give you the total amount of days for each year to show you this pattern that I'm talking about. In 2010, there were 354 nights and days. In 2011, there were 355 nights and days. In 2012, there were 356 night and days. In 2013, there was 354. It went back to 354. So we're showing you a 354, 355, 356. Then it's starting back at 354 days. So again, in 2013, there were 354 nights and days. In 2014, there were 355 nights and days. In 2015, there will be 356 nights and days. I could already predetermine this because I'm already familiar with how the cycle works. So what we get here is that the solar and lunar cycles repeats every three years. 354, 355, 356. And again, 354, 355, 356. The solar and lunar cycle has a three-year repeated cycle in a sequence of three years. 354, 355, 356. And the only way, and I mean the only way to notice 
is to keep a track record. Because I've been keeping a track record for several years in order to know this. Ain't nobody tell me this. Ain't no books told me this. The Owaspi ain't tell me this. The Bible ain't tell me this. The Enoch calendar ain't tell me this. No man-made calendar could tell me this. The only way I got this understanding is by observing the sun and the moon night and day, year in, year out, to unlock this mystery. So you are being witness to the function of the Creator's calendar using the sun and moon cycles and nothing else added. Once you get years of observation, it's only when you can appreciate such revelations. I'm just sharing you a portion of this understanding of how cosmological order works using the sun and moon cycles with no written account, with no man-made books, with no man-made calendars. So with this demonstration, you can get an idea how the creator's living mathematics works. I've been following the sun cycle and moon cycles for over seven years now, and this is why I'm able to decode these things in this manner. So now you know that the solar year is not 364 days, but has a three year repeated sequence of 354, 355, 356 nights and days, as I prove using the solar and lunar cycles as a measure of count. And using the crescent moon to determine the position of the sun cycle or the sun's course, because the sun is showing on the moonlight the direction of the course of its travel. By the moon laying on its belly like a bullhorn, to standing upright, and then back to laying on its belly like a bullhorn. And this renders up the solar and lunar years. See that? And the only reason I know this is because I have been obedient in understanding how the Creator's calendar work. And now I can bring it to you. Undisputable evidence. In order to dispute this, you would have to show me your track record of over seven years of you charting it out like I proved and showed to you. Without that, you cannot debate, refute this information until you have spent seven to eight years charting out the moon cycles. If you got that under your belt, come and talk to me. If you don't, just take heed and take notes and try to learn how it works. And with that, I'd like to say peace and blessings. Shalom.